Uh, Zoom audience, welcome. Um, if you are out in the uh, Facebook and others, welcome as, as well. I uh, want to in encourage those who have joined us uh, in the chat. You, if you'd like, uh, introduce yourself in the chat so we know who you are, where you're from. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to welcome all of you to uh, this Plan C Live session on uh, the civic response by makers in Germany. Um, Andreas Kopp will act as a moderator here and introduce uh, all our, our panelists here. And uh, please put your questions either in the, uh, there's a Q and A se section on, on Zoom or type them into the chat and we'll try to uh, 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 answer them as we can. So Andreas, welcome. Thank you for organizing this and uh, welcome from Munich. Yeah, thank you, Dale. Um, I, I'm Andy uh, here in Munich, uh, Germany. I'm I'm running a fab lab called Eventer, uh, Finder Garden in German. It means Inventor Garden in English. And I focus mostly on teenagers and, and kids. Uh, I will uh, screen share now so we can see my, uh, a couple of pictures. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit how things unraveled in Germany. So you uh, get a little bit of an uh, idea. So this is this is uh, uh, my, my kids. You can you can see that normally I'm uh, I'm I'm teaching. We have a drum here, and uh, so as I recall um, correctly, uh, uh, it was first you know this kind of shortages that were happening in the in the uh, in Germany that you don't get the beans that you got in the toilet paper. You still could go to events. I think this was our last event. We did a repair cafe here. Um, um, in our in our uh, location here at Bamberg uh, Tatil, uh, and um, and then people um, really were looking at um, at um, Facebook. So the the Facebook group OSMC Open Source Medical Supplies. Uh, that's where really all the things happened. This was in the week I think of the 16th of March. Uh, people were looking there, and um, nobody really knew what to do uh, yet. You know, they were looking at designs of, of uh, respirators, uh, uh, looking of, of, um, of uh, N95 filters. Um, um, and then on the 16th of March, um, the uh, shut, uh, shutdown happened. So in the, the emergency state in Bavaria was declared. And I think this really changed uh, a lot for, for the for whole Germany because this was the first um, a country, a state that that declared this uh, this emergency state, and then every uh, suddenly everybody was on the internet. Um, here you can see a picture of um, of an online meeting on Yitzi. Um, um, people were meeting online. I think in this week from the 16th, I was in like uh, every day I was in a different online meeting, and then one thing happened. What really uh, changed a lot was the uh, the uh, um, maker versus virus, um, no, uh, via versus virus uh, hackathon on the uh, weekend of the 20th and the uh, 22nd of March. I ran quickly to the to the Home Depot the tomb here and got some foil and partnered up with my uh, a friend um, Michael in Berlin. And we that, that's that's where you first time. Uh, um, looked at face shields. Prusa was, um, uh, Prusa Research um, published, I think, on Thursday that he will donate um, 100,000, no, uh, first 10,000 shields. And this really, like, first people were all discussing what we could do. And this really gave uh, an, an easy solution for many makers out there, I believe. Uh, the Spanish, you can see, they were much quicker. They already started with their um, to form a group much earlier. Niels will talk about how we formed in Germany. They already on this weekend on the 22nd of uh, and uh, 20, 20, uh, 22nd were already um, making a um, lot of face shields. Where in Germany, people were uh, still like um, in this maker versus virus hackathon, more like um, strategizing. Uh, so, so an I already, um, I was lucky that a friend of mine, oops, sorry, uh, a friend of mine already got a request from a hospital in Antwerp, um, in, or in Brussels, sorry, in Brussels, uh, to produce 1,000 face shields. 
And so I already um, started to making and testing them very early. And then the next week I already went to the hospitals and tried to um, um, like um, get some test results. So because still we weren't sure if these things were really needed. I thought, oh man, it's only happening in Italy and in Spain, but in Germany we are safe, we don't need this extra supplies. But um, only a week later it, it, was, um, it was clear that also these hospitals didn't have the supplies necessary. They were telling me about that some containers didn't come and that we ordered three weeks um, before. So we started to ship out. And then at the same time, online groups were, um, were emerging. I uh, first was, uh, I, I, I saw a link in the, in the Facebook group of uh, OSMC that there's a German group, uh, 3D Druck für die Krisenbewältigung, that where I, where I joined, but they were really strict. Like in Germany, it seems people were really like focusing on the Prusa design and really like uh, looked, they were always talking about certification or about the Czech um, ministry, but in the end, I think uh, Josef Prusa just st uh, stood next to uh, the Minister of Health and said, our shield is validated, but obviously there was no like serve, uh, formal validation or certification. It is impossible in three days, but the Germans really like, ah, but this is validated. We only print Prusa. Um, I, I said, man, I cannot do that. So I, I focused on this very easy shield and uh, um, uh, we call it the Prusa design where you can stack uh, 30 pieces um, at the same time. I, I, I got my family to, to Bruce and, uh, and help me. And then really like, I, I think in Germany, the issue was not, or is still not the production, it's the distribution. I have to see at what time, six minutes, okay. Um, for example, here I'm over, uh, this guy is like the purchasing department uh, of a big hospital, the uh, Rechts der Isa. So I had to go there with like five different um, models and present it to him and then he would talk to the boss and then, and then, uh, 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 then in the end, they decided on some other shield because they were internally already printing. So it was a lot of uh, time necessary to distribute these things. This, for example, this lady, Mr. Mrs. Sale, was the first, my, is my, still my best customer, is a, a small hospital uh, near Munich in Grafelfing. And then uh, really the things uh, uh, unraveled with the community. So. Um, I first was in this Facebook groups, but then it, then it became clear that most of the people are going to the uh, Slack group of Maker versus Virus, and uh, and there because I think Facebook, you know, there's these these nerds that don't like Facebook, so it's better to have an open system. Slack is not open, would be, but the best solution at that uh, at that uh, time. And then people were just uh, like the, the first thing I think I did all by myself. This uh, the first order with Mrs. Sali here. Uh, and then people were coming in here, you see this guy, and they're dropping stuff at my uh, front door. And then really like a lot of stuff came in, stuff came in, uh, three minutes, okay, I'm getting faster. Uh, here, you see like uh, my kids um, play baskets full of, sh of shields. And then in the end we had to like um, find the solution. So we found um, uh, a nice uh, space here from the DLRG. And there we like, um, I tried to uh, do the quality testing. We um, we um, um, uh, like like we use PVC sheets um, to uh, as a as a shield, not the thick Prusa sheet. So we had to uh, uh, samples uh, um, punch them. And here I bought this kind of, uh, this thing to round up the extras to be faster. And so in the end, we had like a hundred people helping us, and we're meeting uh, almost. Uh, every day or a uh, uh, couple of times a week to process this stuff. Then also uh, we got uh, uh, like we first uh, focused on face sheets, but quickly some uh, it evolved that some people don't like face sheets to make face sheets. So people wa wanted to also make masks. What we did, we used we used this uh, uh, felt blown um, uh, material here that the uh, minister of um, uh, Rupert Aiwanger uh, gave all over uh, um, Bavaria. It's, I think this role I'm ha holding here is like uh, uh, 2,000 euros. And we use this um, to make shields. We just cut them um, in 20 by 20 uh, big uh, sheets and, uh, and uh, with seven uh, of those and these CD-printed uh, clips you see here, you would have this mask here. 
and I think we in the end made like 1,800 here. Um, um, here, yeah, I have to go to the other panelists. Sure, sorry to, to it, like storytelling is, uh, takes, uh, takes so long, but um, I'm, 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 wrapping, uh, I'm wrapping up. So um, I think the, the good part, uh, the, the, the fun part is that we got so many different people together here. You see here um, students, um, um, girl, we had even a girl. And make a, a, a special thing, and um, so so uh, I think this is uh, this is all about Munich. In the end, we we produced um, over eight thousand of the shields, two thousand um, um, uh, uh, masks, and also now I have to say I'm uh, like the first uh, like I, I supplied these uh, ear things to them, and now I'm even uh, even getting um, an order, a formal order from the hospital here in Munich. To make them, and this will help me as well. I think to finance uh, the time I was, I think two months now, full time organizing this. At least I, I can, I think, a little bit um, get my money back from that. And they, and they're so helpful and so nice. So, um, so now I'm. I want to introduce uh, the other panelists. Um, uh, we we first um, go with the university point of view, then uh, with Karsten. Then we look at um, how it uh, how it went in Fechta. Um, Dominic did uh, a great job there and and quickly scaled up production uh, much further than, than than what we did here in Munich. I think here in Munich we really focused on the community, do it yourself. Uh, and the other panel, uh, Neil was always talking, uh, 3D printing is not uh, the thing to do, but 3D printing creates community. And I think this is a, a, a very important aspect we don't have to, it's not only about the best production method, but what people are willing, because it feels so good to help somebody else. And then it doesn't matter what you're doing, but what's, what uh, technique you're doing. So this uh, was 11 minutes, sorry. So I'm giving up to, to, uh, to Karsten now, and I'm trying to moderate a little bit in, uh, in between and asking questions. Uh, so uh, Karsten, I'm, I'm going out here, I'm muting okay. myself. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, super interesting story. Um, and s a lot of similarities. So let me just see, I need to share my desktop. Okay. Okay. So can you see my desktop? Not yet. Okay. Do you need to stop second. sharing, Andreas? Like maybe stop sharing your desktop? Ah, I think that was good. So can you see this desktop now? Can you see my desktop? No. Okay, so what's wrong? Have you tried turning it off desktop? and on again? Oh, okay, now it works. Just a second. Okay, okay so yeah. here we go. See my desktop now? Yep. Okay, so quickly, um, I see a lot of similarities um, to, to the story you have told. Uh, but you're right, um, we were um, focusing on different aspects, like uh, we're fab lab in Camp Linford, which is close to the uh, Dutch border, close to Duisburg, close to the Ruhr area. Um, and we are associated to the universities, like we have the university fab lab. So we are an open lab and we have all the access for everyone to come and to learn and to do, quite similar to any other fab lab. So we are really open. But uh, we had lockdowns, so the university was closed completely. So we were in a quite a serious situation, couldn't access the, the laboratory, couldn't access the lab. But of course we know there was a need, uh, a specific need from the hospital in Cumberland for the city where we are located. So since that was approached to us, like the, the mayor contacted me and asked, okay, well, can you do something? Um, we thought, yeah, we can do something. There are some solutions. There's a lot of activities going on in the naked community as we all know. And of course, the Prusa was one of the versions uh, being printed so much. So uh, the hospital we talked to, which is the San Bernard Hospital, that they, they already said, okay, we're doing this printing of the Prusa mask, can't you help? And we said, yes, of course we can help. So what we did, we went to our fab lab, took all the printers we had, uh, put them on trolleys, and I kind of prepared them in a way that every printer was set up with a lot of uh, filament and all of their staff members, it's just a few of our printers, all the staff members came, took one of the printer, took them home, and we started community printing. Not in such a big scale like in Munich, because it was all like uh, associated people to the university, more or less, but in a local community and for local uh, um, needs for the hospital first. 
Um, so there's just a, a little view of people or, or places that they have been involved in the, in, the, in the vicinity of our university. And yes, we could help, you know, quickly with the first uh, a bunch of uh, um, advisors we could produce for the, for the hospital. But of course, yeah, they are too slow. As you have mentioned, as Nina's mentioned, it takes too long to print this uh, uh, visor. So we said we, should, we have to do something else. So we talked to the hospital, as you did, Andreas, and we, you know, try to understand what are the core needs and what can we do, you know, and how can we make something that can be made faster. So we made a very first simple prototype out of MDF, as you can see, super nice, super simple. Um, and by the way, credits uh, to Daniela and to Ahmed, who he, he was the founder of the first version of that. And we made a second prototype, slightly lighter, uh, of different material, because material was also an issue, as you know, or all of you know, where to get the right material, you know. Um, so we did some modifications according to the feedback from the hospital and make it bigger here, make it smaller there, you know, we need to have like a, a, a top kind of protection because of the spitting and so on. So we tried to do whatever we could and we assembled a lot of different prototypes, went to the hospital and did a lot of testing, you know. So like uh, in, in, in about two weeks, we have been every day to the hospital and every night shift, they test the new version of the, of, the, of the shields, then we adapted them according to their needs and requirements. And of course we had some trails and fails as well. That this was the uh, uh, disinfection method by heat it did work uh, because of the material and we did new releases, further testing like stress tests and so on. But at the end we got the final goal. So we, had, we found a solution uh, within about two weeks that was suitable to all the needs, which was not just the comfort or the size, the protection itself, but also the yeah, desinfection. Yeah, a, little bit, uh, uh, a little bit faster, I think you have to go. Yes, to, uh, I, will. I will. So within less weeks, we produced an open source product we could uh, um, share, and we did. This is uh, like the pieces of the, of, the, of the design. We create manuals in different uh, languages, like German, English, Spanish, and also French. And because we know not everybody has a laser cutter for fast production, we also made a 3D printable version. So um, even though the university was locked down, we changed from making to production. This is really interesting, I guess. So we started producing with the materials and the tools we had, three laser cutters at our uh, laser cutters at our place, and we started making this the spatials uh, with the manual and everything. So then we then we approached the, the region. This is something that you can easily do as a university because you have a certain standing. So we had press releases and so on. We created a website with all the information on that. And we, we, we asked the, the, the local industry and the community to support, not just the makers, but also the industry. So we, we enhanced our production by the network because we realized even with a faster production on laser cutting, it doesn't work. So we created a network of production, logistics, and distribution in the, in the area, different places. So we, in the Fab Labs, this, produced, like we really had a production line in our lab. We kind of changed machines and so on, uh, used a die cutter to pre-cut uh, sheets of plastic and so. And we had the German Red Cross, uh, which was like one of our key partners because they managed to get the material from somewhere, somehow with the local com companies and delivered the material to the different production sites. They also picked up all the finished parts and did all the logistics like disinfection, uh, assembly, uh, put together in a box and sent them to the, to the uh, um, receipts. We had a, another school uh, of providing vocational education that supported the, with a water jet. And finally, we found a company, super nice, and they did it all for free uh, of, of cutting hundreds of them per day. So we created in four weeks, 5,000 visors um, made by the local community. Um, That's great. And the takeaways, and I'm almost to the end, Andreas. Uh, so the takeaways was like we were able to help or help us to beat it. Uh, we're a university lab, and for university lab, we have a lot of restrictions, as you can imagine, way more than a private lab. But we were able to do it, and we got the full support of the administration of the university, and we kind of created a nice, super ad hoc network with the NGOs, NPOs, and the industry in the area. Yeah. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Karsten. That's amazing. That's great work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Carl. Yeah, what, what I found always interesting is that, that like at one stage, I think everybody on the whole world did the same work. They, they all took some other design as inspiration, but then all did their own version of it. <laughs> so I yeah. think for the next crisis, we have to see if we can somehow um, like trust in other designs more. 
I don't know if it's possible. Everybody wants to put his own, like Daniele was uh, uh, writing me, hey, can you send me the, the laser cut design you did on the weekend before, you know, yeah. stuff like this. Okay. But very interesting. Yeah, Carson, can you unshare your screen? Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, next, Niels, uh, sorry, I think I, I, I missed up the, uh, the, the uh, little bit, but Niels, Order. can you talk about how you uh. managed with the community? I think it's a great job of, of uh, you know, in Germany, we've got like, 6,000 people in the, in, the, in the Slack group, how you managed, how you uh, did your great updates and stuff like this and how, how, talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, yeah, give, give me a short note at two minute 50 so I'm not talking too much because I could easily fill up like one hour with what, what happened. <laughs> wow, good. Um, yeah, I'm starting. Um, yeah, as, as Andreas told, it all started for me with the Wii versus virus hackathon uh, the government did. And there were many projects, but most of them were like startup based or mainly economical based. And this wasn't what I was thinking about. And I hadn't looked into it so much the weeks before. I was seeing there in Dachau, we have a very um, smart local community, which was um, creating new shopping versions of uh, bring and order. But then V versus virus came and my maker instincts woke up and I found the maker versus virus organization that uh, the hammer time in castle built. So uh, greetings go out to all of the hammer time in castle. I did a great job starting, but um, they were mostly making things and making things and organizing thing people at the same time is exhausting <laughs> at last. And as, as yeah, we're seeing the similarities. Um, uh, Andreas and I, we've talked and we've talked about, okay, let's move it from Facebook. We've had a lot of people not liking Facebook into Slack, which also people don't like, but we had this big spreadsheet where people could register, oh, I'm a maker. Um, then we started to think, okay, we don't want to organize them centrally, so they decentralized. And from then on, it was a lot easier because people were caring for their own smaller community. And we said something like, okay, over 500 printed face shields, which was like the first thing we did. And we've talked a lot about models. And I know Andreas and I, we had a lot of fights about models. <laughs> and um, they've organized their own central community. Um, over 500 we said, okay, we're getting injection molds soon. So it would be nice to then go to Peter or um, Dominic afterwards. And as soon as we get injection molding, we only doing the small requests. But the thing is the requests started piling up. Then people were piling up like, oh, yeah, I want to do a hub, I want to do a hub. Then we have companies registering who did cheap knockoffs and we need to talk about, oh, we need a code of conduct now. So we need to talk about how much should a face shield cost? How much should it not cost? Um, so we had ethical discussions, we had uh, medical ethical discussions um, we were getting kind of legal experts in not getting too concrete on the whole protection um, equipment issue we said like oh yeah you can use it you can use it for eating pasta yeah, it's it's not something for medical we're just producing it we're giving it to whoever orders it and if you can't pay for it, we're finding a way. And we were, there, there were popping uh, PayPal pools um, were popping up for single hubs that wrapped up 10,000s of euros. And we were all getting in and saw thousands of people piling up in the Slack, people that never used Slack, people that never used obviously the internet to a certain degree, but who had a 3D printer and we're trying to organize. And I think we got to the point, luckily, um, where we set some decisions down, which was the, okay, we're doing Prusa RC free. So hubs can support other hubs, like the Hamburg hub can support the Berlin hub, can support the Munich hub, because they are all doing Prusa shields. We had this wonderful hub Braunschweig, um, who got over three metric tons of uh, PET and cut it all down. And he sold it, that sold it like for 50 cents a piece for Prusa RC free. And he sent out thousands of packages. I can share the, the picture of the packages later he sent us. And then we had this form, Google Doc form. We're using a lot of Google spreadsheets, Google Docs, uh, because it was the easiest and avail mostly available. And we had this form where people could order these shields for the local hub. And all of a sudden, he was at 15,000 shields or something. So the numbers were scaling up in, in, in ways we never thought of. All of this beside doing a normal full-time job having family, having homeschooling. It was like, it was quite getting hard to juggle it. And um, 
luckily we had a quite good network from the Ma Munich Maker Fair we did in 2013. So uh, we went to Tom, who is uh, working for the Association of Open Workshops. And uh, I'm very happy that he talked to some people at the government and we went under their protection it's umbrella. A little fast, a little fast, like, <laughs> As uh, told, I could, I could do it. We can do a lot more in Q&A afterwards. And, I mean, what, uh, that yeah. does give an impression like who was in this group? What, is, what, what, what was yeah. the... What it was, was mainly... The... Yeah. Um, so it was, it was me. So I'm still a free kind of agent. Uh, I did Make Munich. I did uh, 3D printing um, for 3D hubs. Someday I had my own small 3D printing startup. And the Hammer Time Castle, obviously, the, the core team was the Hammer Time Castle, plus uh, someone who is good in product management, uh, is Michael Witz, we set him on mostly mediation between hub organizers, because there were a lot of egos, having a lot less sleep than they should have, talking to each other over the internet to people they never met before, and um, this was kind of explosive sometimes, but I think we actually managed to get along quite well. And uh, the other one is Alexander Klarman, who is doing press for us, who is um, a friend of mine and helped me founding the Make Munich. Um, another person I met, I did the Make Munich with, and this was the first time we met at the Make Munich. And um, so I was used to working online with a lot of people and having a lot of conversations parallelly on multiple platforms. And then I tried to talk to as many people as possible. And like, Dominic from Wächter came and we said like, okay, get into the Slack because I can only manage so many communications at the same time. I've talked to Dominic, um, uh, who's Anke's um, husband, and it's like, okay, yeah, we're doing this and doing injection molding soon. And I was like, okay, wonderful. Yeah, I, I, at least one region of Germany I don't have to care about. Then uh, Andreas Gradat came in from the um, Austrian uh, catastrophe crisis center and he was like, yeah, I need 400 thousands. And he was like, okay, <laughs> it's getting out of hands. Yeah, I know, timing, right? <laughs> Can't hear you, you're muted. Andreas, you're muted. <laughs> oh, no, so I have this. Uh, the thank you, Niels, I think you uh, gave an expression that there's so many people that you did a good job in like mediating. With, I think you have a good, if you, with, with nine kids, you know how to mediate, uh, you know? or nine, eight, eight, tell me nine. Eight, getting to nine soon, nine. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I, uh, then then let's let's go to an approach from from Vector to Dom Dominic. Um, um, like if you can you can uh, talk like how, uh, how what an awesome job you you did uh, in your community. I even didn't know where Vector is before. But you, <laughs> like, you, Vechter, Vechter. Yeah, you I was the, good. You were the first guy that really um, that really uh, got into um, injection molding. And and also Peter, uh, let's 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 see if you, you two can uh, each take uh, five minutes and really like focus on like the maybe one one per, uh, like uh, Dominic focuses on like his story and and Peter we can maybe focus more on this like uh, certification kind of thing where we maker don't have any idea about. Okay, um, first of all. It, it wouldn't work like it worked when there was no maker versus virus group because they helped me a lot. Thank you, Niels, because you were really supporting me at two o'clock in the morning with questions. And when I was going really uh, through the roof because of <laughs> not existing sleep and so on. So um, I will not talk about the part um, 3D printing, because it was totally the same like in Munich, where we produced one and a half thousand, a lot of people helped us and they have done really a great job. Situation was, I'm a one man show, I have no maker space, I hope I will get one or we will start here something, but um, currently I was just the guy who asked the doctor and then it, it exploded. And um, during this 3D printing, I realized that a lot of people from totally different working groups were asking me, oh, I need face shields. And I realized when I count all these working groups and put them together and think about how much of these um, people are working in Germany, we are talking about a million. And I was really, okay, you produce 500, you are proud like hell, and this is nothing in terms of what, what is necessary. And I think I had it with Peter some night to talk about this and we were coming to this, this will explode and we need something which is li li produce a li little bit more. 
My luck was I had an interview with my local newspaper and I was a little bit um, arrogant and I told in the camera of the face group guy, um, camera guy, well, and if the industry would help, I would really like it and you know how to do it, so please contact me. And they have done this. They called me three days later on and told me, well, okay, if you want, we can build a form for injection molding and we can start. And I think, well, guys, this costs money. Don't care about it. We will build it and do it. And I said, yes. I said, uh, and then I have done something which I normally in my job not do. I decided in that minute, okay, we do Prusa, go. <laughs> no decision about um, which uh, is the best solution. I, I thought, well, okay, Prusa is there, RC2, and let's go. And so they started. And after one and a half week, we had the form. We had the... Um, and they started to produce. So I was, that was the reason I was so fast. And then we produced three and a half thousand to four and a half thousand per day. And I had to, uh, it was necessary to tell the people from my 3 bit printing community, guys, we don't need your <laughs> um, printing anymore. And it was really difficult because there were a lot of people that told me. How did they react? I think uh, many people like Not this really not happy it was really this no uh, we don't want to stop and i talked with other hubs and then i say well okay you can still print like you want i don't want to stop you but it's uh, compare it and it was also the injection molded um um gestelle the frames they are they are really um clean you can disinfect them they are much more durable so it was really they are better and th yeah. this the industry is a little bit more professional with it. And if we talk about money and about time and its security and so on, it's, it's a difference. And, but there's one thing I really want to emphasize. Without 3D printing, injection molding would not be possible. They, they are fast. They can innovate like hell. So when you remember, when you look only at the Prusa um, frame, which come from one in five hours produced. Then after, I think one week, we were talking about four stacks, eight stacks, just the Prusa shield, not the other ones, which are, from my opinion, also very, very good designs. This was only, this was an evolution of the product. It was amazing. And I think this is something uh, which really was necessary. And the industry came in the moment where there was a good solution to Dominic, Dominic, we have to wrap up, we have to wrap up, to, uh, we have to go to, oh, to Peter. time is gone, okay. So, uh, but uh, but thank you very much, you gave a good impression, you, you didn't, you didn't uh, say that you also involved a uh, disabled company to mount them together, I read on your, and, and then you really like tried to perfect, you made an on, like, an, an, another guy uh, helped you with the online shop and stuff like this, so it's, it can be ordered already online now. And you, yeah. how, how, how many are you sending out? How, have, how, how many have you distributed now? Around about twenty thousand. To be honest, I I'm currently not on the, um, on the on the best list. But this is, I think, one last sentence from my uh, from my side. We started a local network which was independent. All companies, the disabled workshop, um, the um, the guy with the shop are in the range of 40 kilometers. So we really, this was a local network which came to life in two weeks and solved the solution with a very big, for a very big region and reason. And also we delivered to, to Bavaria, which is for me. Uh, by the way, Fechter is between Bremen and Osnabrück, if you want to know where it is. Thank so you. that's from my side. <laughs> Thank you, Dominic. Now, let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's hand over to Peter and maybe you can, uh, like, uh, you, you made this shield for me completely. Uh, I have no idea why you made an 80 gram uh, uh, heavy. heavy shield. Yeah. Can you please explain? Uh, oh, like, yeah. for me, it's completely, uh, it's, it's, uh, you, I know you put something in, you will explain, but yeah. for me, oh, well. I, yeah, tell me, tell me. Okay, so first of all, it's Peter from Makerspace in Bonn. Um, and when it all started, and that was even before Maker versus Virus, um, we mobilized nearby Makerspaces to join, to produce whatever might be needed. Uh, we decentralized our production like others did to, as we had to close down. And uh, we produced in the meantime like 5,000 uh, 5, hand-sewn masks, thousands of face shields, hundreds of uh, door handle stuff and ear savers, if you know these. 
uh, we reproduce these valves and adapters which have saved life in, lives in Italy just to pre -prepare in, be prepared in case that is needed in Germany. Fortunately, not the case. We even have look on ventilators. We talk with doctors on, on how to respirate, etc. Um, it made us visible in press. City officials asked us even whether we would be interested to be some kind of technical firefighters. Um, and that's, that's a good sign in, in terms of maker city. Um, when it became apparent that uh, the key topic is face shields, we joined versus, uh, Maker versus Virus. And um, as already mentioned, the estimate for the demand was well above 1 million, just having like 400K uh, from, from Vienna. And we immediately understood that injection molding is what we need uh, to free the 3D printing force for the other potential tasks ahead. And um, well, when we started to look for supplies, uh, we got contacted ourselves by Bosch, uh, which is a German-based uh, global industry giant. Uh, they asked us saying, well, we've been with all the officials and they couldn't tell us what to do, how we could support. And the Maker Force had answers as we were already in production. Um, and there were several designs which we shared within Germany uh, in the end, and that's coming to, the, to, to answer the question, why did we go for this heavy design? It's an American design from uh, CME CNC, which is found on GitHub. We had to make a really quick decision. What do we go for? We went for Prusa compatibility in, in terms of the, the, um, the visor, um, but we wanted to have this closed design, and this was ready available and uh, out of the crowd, out of our community, there was the sign, we have to close things to, to be more safe that the virus as a result doesn't get in. Yeah, of course, it's more heavy. Um, so that's, that's a, uh, it's, it's a contra, uh, it's not that perfect in that regard, but you can still easily wear it. So the total weight is still under 100 grams. Um, so we also went to use a plastics, which is um, high temperature compatible. So you can put it in the so-called autoclave, at least in Germany, it's called like this. So to sterilize it in, 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 the, um, um, in, the, uh, in that devices. So now we serve the market jointly. The, the makerspace is some kind of the speedboat. We do what the huge tanker being Bosch cannot do quickly. So we get, 10,000s of transparents delivered. We cut thousands of rubber bands and PE foam with our um, Arduino cutting machines we built for this purpose. Uh, we're packaging and shipping. We do the hotline, we do the flyers. So just quickly, and, and this is something industry can't do quickly. And they need to have their processes and et cetera, et cetera. They, they, that's simply not their turf. Yep. Um, that's why collaboration makes sense. We can go back later, but we have to only like, uh eight minutes on the live stream, there will be more, we can discuss more. Yeah. One, one about certification is possible, but it's time consuming and costly. So far customers didn't ask for it. Um, and that's why we didn't go that route. Once somebody says I buy, but only with the certificate, I'll get the certificate. The last sentence, normally we focus on STEAM education and um, we did this with our three, 30 3D printers uh, having a, that's what we call one robot per child. Um, of course, that doesn't scale either. So I can produce some thousands, but not 10,000s or a million. Now we discussed with Bosch, with Bosch that they will join us in that topic as well, which is just great. That's great. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Then uh, uh, let's, let's go to, to Anke. And uh, she, she also uh, made facials or her husband made facials, by the way, uh, I helped a little bit with design, at least like, I was like this uh, first guy, the expert of face fields, so the, the designer approached me and at least I could go get the 888 design and not the Prusa with one <laughs> injection molding piece that, that you distributed. <laughs> so, so please, uh, let, let's uh, uh, tell a little bit about what you did and also like uh, some aspect of, of how we makers maybe get in the future better support from government because I, I talk with many with like um, uh, crisis um, uh, teams, they're not even connected, like Munich is not connected with the counties, they, they're not, uh, the Red Cross is not connected to the uh, fire department, there's a lot of connection mis missing, I'm hoping we in the future yeah. can connect, maybe we have the clue between all these uh, different people. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hello. Um, 
I'm not only a maker, I'm also a member of the National Parliament, the Internet Policy Speaker for the Left Party, but also the Parliament was not working like normal in Corona times. And so I had more times than usual. My calendar was all of a sudden empty. And uh, then there is a maker space, the, the next house to our home. Um, and my husband and me were having a maker space with an educational center inside, but education was also not possible. So we did the same like everybody else already described in this session. And uh, I'm now sharing my screen so you can see pictures. Here we are. And you already saw this model. Um, we started like everybody else with 3D printing, but um, after a lot of rapid prototyping and continuous design improvements, we ended up after only 10 days after the first 3D print, um, having the first prototype produced with injection molding. And here you see the big boxes with lots of those face uh, shield frames um, all together in a net open um, in a network, a regional network of open workshops. We have uh, received 24,000 of those injection molded um, frames. And um, we have, I'm just going back. Stop share so you can see me again. Um, we have also 3D printed stuff all the time. Um, in our little maker space, which is based in a train station, we produced something like 850 with 3D printing, but uh, we handed out close to 6,000 altogether. And in the regional network, which is in Berlin and in Brandenburg, the state around Berlin, we now are closing 25,000 uh, face shields, which we have distributed. Uh, what we did very early on was a very close cooperation directly with manufacturer, for example, uh, face shield foils or rubber bands. So we got the material directly from them. So we had um, solved some resource issues, which we were facing very early. Things you could shop online were sold out very soon. So we did that. And uh, after that, we somehow turned from producer of stuff to a logistics operations. And then after we covered the regional demand, which is covered by now, uh, we started to receive first international demands. And we already shipped uh, several hundred of those face shields to Syria, to the camp of Moria. We are now, um, the NGO Cardos is doing this, organizing a shipment to children's hospitals in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thousand frames will go there. And then we are still trying to figure out how to uh, fill a request coming from indigenous people from the Amazonas in Brazil. Um, they need stuff as well. And uh, so now our biggest uh, challenge is logistics. But, um, as a politician, I also deal about finance. We lived on donations so far, but if you scale, finance becomes an issue. And German, the German government was uh, giving out 155 billion and more euro for all sorts of Corona help. So I was filing an official um, request to the government asking whether some of these many euros can be given to non-profit organizations, which as we have heard all over Germany have helped solve uh, problems in the crisis, producing uh, product, protection equipment stuff, and they have costs to cover. I only talk about costs. And the answer unfortunately was, if we were for profit, we could get fundings from the government from this 156 billion euros, but not if you do it for non-profit, which is ridiculous. So I was asking the same on the state level, same answer. And um, we are now trying to organize uh, better policies. So there will be a structure funding for open workshops because we could see that the fastest immediate response in Germany and I bet in other uh, countries as well comes from a decentralized open um, workshops and maker spaces. They are so much faster. Industry yeah. could not deliver. They could not deliver, but we could, we could do this. 
And this is, it's a needed infrastructure and it's also a democratization of means yes. of production, something we need. And we could see it in times of crisis, this works yes. and it just needs funding. Yes, Anka, thank you very much for saying that. We have the same exact issues in the United States, it's seeing the same thing. I've called it a civic infrastructure that we need around production and, and innovation uh, uh, for public good. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, I'd love to keep following what you're doing there. Uh, and I guess it's time to go to Tom here. Yeah, I don't know how much time is really left. Only seconds, I think. No, no, we're going to go five more minutes on the live stream. So five go. more minutes. Okay, um, I'm working for a foundation, a nonprofit foundation in Munich, also based in Munich, but we support uh, all kinds of DIY cultures all, uh, all over Germany and also the Association of Open Workshops, which has a nonprofit status. Uh, what 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 can we learn from this crisis response? Um, because in fact, this crisis is only one crisis. After this, there will be the next. Uh, so what we see is that the social civic initiatives are not only the fire extinguishers, but they are something like a uh, basic infrastructure that is needed, like you also already uh, said. And um, what, what we can see there is that the services of general interest are much better uh, based by these uh, infrastructures that are not focused on making profit, which are not for, um, for the profit of um, the, the corporations, but for the, the care. The care activity is like a, like a seismograph for this uh, uh, so, uh, transformation of society. What the, open, the Association of Open Workshops is doing, we are trying now to help these people for, for whom uh, this kind of um, organization in a local, uh, uh, locally is new and this form of um, working together is new. We, try, we want to try to help them to build their own maker spaces, their fab labs, their open workshops, to build their infrastructure locally and um, based on the community, not by uh, some uh, profit centers like uh, all sorts of um, innovation hubs are for the, the for-profit for economy. And there are much more forms of economy nobody sees, and this is what we see in this crisis. When the, the so-called big economy is shutting down, not the, the, the whole society is shut down, we see that there is a lot of power, a lot of capacity to, um, to deal, to respond to crises. Like, in fact, we have a lot of these uh, issues to deal with, and um, the foundation is one form of supporting um, locally and with infrastructure for like a country in Germany with the Association of Open Workshops. But in fact, it's a public affair, it's a public issue. So the so-called Daseinsvorsorge, the, 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 what you call it in English, the services of general interest, um, has to put more emphasis on the self-sufficiency, the subsistence practices to, and has to strengthen them because this makes a society resilient, more resilient. I don't know. Um, are we already in the, uh, still in the uh, live or are we still or not in uh, the till 50. Yeah, till. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe use this two so, minutes uh, to, to kind of find some, uh, some future things about what we have we learned. So we have to be really quick for this two minutes. So I learned what I see that uh, in my community, many people came uh, and helped. They were not in maker spaces. Many people came from the outskirts of Munich that they, that they didn't normally go to my lab or the other labs there, but they still wanted to help. I think, I think there's a need to, to have smaller labs everywhere 
this is my thing. If you go really quickly, we have only one minute. So really quickly. No, uh, we keep going. Minute. Keep going. No, like, we're okay, going to go to the hour. Let's just, the hour. Okay, yeah, okay, just, okay. just let's, just don't okay, worry about, yeah. about if, that. If we you shouldn't can, have brought it up. Sure, sure. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you can share. Still like, gets recorded. Your, your learnings, what you, what you think will be uh, uh, the lessons for the future, what we can take. With, uh, with what we learned, if you if you go around and now who, who wants to go first, <laughs> please. Nils. So um, yeah, what I've learned is um, I need to connect to way more people worldwide, so I can tell them to not reinvent the wheel like twenty four or twenty five times, but just like maybe only three or two times, and then put more energy into the production and development, and not so much in the system because we had that a lot. We had like oh we need another selector, and oh here's the city x versus COVID versus corona versus virus and i was like trying to fetch them hurt them into like one or at least only two channels and it's hard it's not that i think that we need this with anyone we had this discussion with the ccc where they're like this is slack i'm sorry but no and i was like okay yeah but you're producing face shields and saving people it's fine but now afterwards um it would be awesome to have all of these people where we have this minimum ethical framework. We want to help people and we don't want it because we want to earn money. We only want to do it because we are solidary with everyone else. We like humans, we want to protect them from harm and that's our baseline. And I want to have this in like kind of a manifesto and then throw people onto it and see who sticks. And next time mm -hmm. something like this comes up, like let it be aliens, let it be whatever. I want to say like, okay, let's pop up the production line again. Let's pop up the open R&D line again. Um, I'm talking already to OSMS, who has a lot of translators and localizers. Um, I'm talking to the Tom Global, uh, Tika Oklam makers, mm -hmm. um, who is doing a more product approach. And they could use translators. So that's nice that they don't have someone in Germany yet. And I'm talking to like, I don't know, 20 other um, initiatives, hopefully more after this. And I'm trying to get them to have at least the smaller mailing list, whatever, like a connection channel, the hackerspace mailing list was 10 years ago. And then to see from there where we can throw our energy into the next system to get to this more decentralized, resilient systems like in Demon from Daniel Suarez, um, who wrote it quite well, like think long term, think humanity, and don't think capitalism because that clearly didn't work as we saw in this crisis. And yeah, I want to give over to um, Tom because I'm working with him on this. <laughs> or Carsten, <laughs> who, who said. <laughs> yeah, I, al I already was in the future. So what I've learned is that we're uh, on the right track to, to um, stab stability, find some stability in these non-market-oriented infrastructures for the public welfare and the public good, not only the goods. And... Um, yeah, I'm very happy to work with you, Niels, with the people from Maker versus Virus, because the, the special thing I learned is also that there is a lot of interest in being part of something bigger and being part of the big change we all want to see in the world and not only talk, but do. Yeah. So maybe I, uh, I give the word to Peter. Do we do it like this? So Sure. Okay, Peter. And I think Karsten wanted to go. Ah, okay, Karsten, yes, sorry. Let, let yeah. Karsten go. Let the uni university guy go. <laughs> uh, Karsten, one thing that's so a, that's a question. Karsten, maybe you can answer this question right away. Uh, some guys in Northern Westphalia, you are the f founding chief of Northern Westphalia. So he's, he's asking uh, from, the, from the makers Machwerk in Hennef, when is this help coming? They're only spending and they want to know where, uh, and that they cannot survive um, uh, uh, on that, uh, like that. So maybe you can answer that. Uh, I think you are the perfect guy to answer this question. Honestly, I don't get the question. <laughs> yeah, I got the question. Asking... I got the question on Twitter. Maybe I can help. Um, they mm -hmm. were asking mostly. Um, there was a lot of talk about how uh, Northern Westphalia can help small economies, small companies, and uh, guys from the Machwerk were asking, yes, but. <laughs> is any of this help coming to us too? This is like what Anke said about um, distribution of wealth. It's going to companies and not to open associations mm -hmm. who are basically teaching the next generation of crisis responders. Yeah. Okay. 
So, but honestly, I can't answer the question. Uh, so we, and I, I mean, what, we, what we've learned is like, we had a really, really good relationship with the nonprofit organizations. So the, the German Red Cross was so supportive without their support, we weren't able to do this. We were not able to produce in such a scale in such a, such, such a short period of time. They managed to get material from somewhere. Maybe it's because of their name, you know? Maybe it's because of their um, standing. So companies uh, were open to offer their stock uh, for a very good price, surprisingly good prices. So like we have never had a problem. So we, we got material for 15,000 shields. We couldn't use up at the very end. So if there still needs somewhere, just let us know the, the Red Cross has something. But there's a couple of things that we've learned and I find super interesting. One question is something, you know, why did everybody do his own design? Uh, I think that's a very, very good question and a valid question. I think it is because you're overwhelmed by all the solutions that exist. So there's no one unique source where you can look and say, oh, there's a good design, I take it. You know, because it's proven. Because if this would exist, everybody would have taken it. But it's too complicated. We have spoken to so many people and everybody has different requests. We were so focused on one hospital at the beginning and we said, okay, this is it. This is our main user and we go for their requirements. And that's the reason why we did our own because we, they had specific requirements. Yeah. But at the end, maybe they're not too specific, but you know. Um, but there's something else I really would like to point out. It's like the democratization of production is, is it works. It's amazing how fast it has worked and how efficient it was. So what we've learned from our side, like we're a university place, we have a lot of restrictions. In Germany, the hell, you know. But we're already very open and we were able to scale. From one day to the other, we instantly started to make a production line, which was amazing. I've never thought about something like this. But they were like, everybody was willing to support. Everybody did support the administration, the president, so on. Everybody was, well, everybody was on green and go. And this is amazing. But don't compete with the industry. And this we've heard from, from uh, um, some other speakers today as well. So the industry is, is good in what they do, but they are too slow. So that's, I think, is the key. That's something that we have to find, you know, to focus on for the future. How to make better connection between industry and maker spaces, uh, that's whatever that is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I think one thing that I see a bit is that also the makers uh, meeting with like hospitals and, and healthcare professionals is, you know, often those healthcare professionals don't get input into the kinds of products that they use. So being able to modify and change things is very important. Now, you can't do it forever when you go on injection molding, you're set on it. But we, we've actually had this wonderful design process of uh, creating for a, a client, a, a person that really needs it and getting lots of feedback. I loved your examples on that, Carson, just taking it into the hospital and, and getting people to try it on. And I see that repeated a lot in, in places here. Um, Niels? Yeah, we, uh, I, I, I forgot to mention it because um, of timing. Um, a hacker space in Kassel started with a doctor. Like we had a junior associate in a hospital in uh, Kassel and he proved every single design they printed and tested. And he talked about with the hygienic uh, expert yeah. of the hospital. Yes, but uh, but I think this was, this was the problem. The doctors were actually the problem because in the end, the need for the protection uh, uh, in like uh, question marks were for many many other people as well elderly homes uh, sure. uh, so many, it was a uh, very request non-clinical uses uh, yeah. and, totally. and there were more 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 uh, not just clinical use because they are probably yeah. having better sourcing than others and what i realized is that we, we are we made for the doctors that didn't need it so much because they have better sourcing but the small people like uh, for example a uh, caritas mm. food truck for, uh, for a small yeah. children's doctor, for a physicist, for uh, th these kind of people, we were, uh, they have, had a bigger need, but they didn't have a voice because everyone was making for clinical use, you know. I'm, I'm just saying, this was my experience. We have uh, yeah. two more minutes. Uh, yeah, we can go a little bit longer. Someone had their hand okay. up. I can't right, see. Okay, sure. Yeah, go on. An Anka? Yeah, I... Um, I wanted to stress two things I consider um, 
very relevant for the success of our work. And that was first that we were working in a regional network. So it was rather a small network, not too big that made us very effective also in communications. There was little loss in communication and very little overhead, and we could very quickly get things done. And the second I'd like to share is that we very early on did not restrict our work and the network to the uh, means of production we had in the network, but we started uh, to look for ways how to scale fast, extending and reaching out to manufacturers, to uh, small companies and have them produce stuff for us and uh, get the resources directly from producers. This combination really, I think, uh, worked perfectly well. Uh, one, one note to that, like, like I don't believe in this uh, reaching out to, uh, to producers that much because if you scale it further up, you end up in China. This is the problem. Uh, there is no like, uh, why is everything going somewhere else? Like my idea, like I'm now making 10,000 of these. And the thing is the, the hospital, um, I'm sharing the profits with another uh, nonprofit and, and, and they, they, are, they, they, are, they need this stuff. They could also buy it from somebody else, but they buy it from me. I, don't, I cannot do this uh, all the time, but now I can do it. I can make 10,000. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It's, 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 yeah, it's no, I'm, I'm not talking about big companies, and I'm not talking yeah. about China neither. We had a very small company in Saxony which started production in 48 hours. You could never get that fast deliveries from overseas, and I was really talking about small entities and not right. big ones. Right, Niels, could you talk a little bit about if some of them is watching how people there's still a need to get people involved, right? And how do they go to, to, to your organization to figure out where they could help? Um, I think Dominic raised the hand, so he's after me. Okay. <laughs> he wanted to point out. All right. Um, and what Anke said is true. We had a lot of smaller companies, like Mittelständler is like middle small companies is from, I think, five to 10,000 or 2,000 something. And we have very strong middle-sized companies in Germany uh, over hundreds of years old sometimes and um, they were really really helpful and i can't stress out enough that even if you say like you can produce ten thousand ear savers and that's fine we had this discussion in the auger channel this morning um they still can do it and they can do it efficiently uh the the, the thing you're looking for is why everyone is going to china is because you don't think two steps further who's in in into this whole thing. It's like the, the karma chucks that uh, Van Bo did a while ago, where he went the whole nine yards to find out if the, the resources are also produced ethically. And that's, that's where the point is, where we need to throw over capitalism and um, do, do things some, somehow else. But yes, like um, Maker versus Virus is in a process of switching from friendly trying to fulfill every request we get to um, how and what do we do next? So we're having on ahead some small uh, future hackathons. We're splitting into five different groups right now, like future of recycling, sustain uh, recycling and sustainability. We're having one group switching to um, doing uh, stuff for people with special needs. And we're having already two or three different um, associations in Germany who did that, but never had like this kind of resource and people available so now we're having 6885 people in the slack right now and every single one has a 3d printer <laughs> so that's actually um, i think sometimes our capacity of producing face shield topped up to 10,000 a day which is quite nice it's a theoretically limit but um and it's limited by material um but still next time someone comes up says we need 10,000 3d printed rams to fix structure as it is right now on the short term we can easily deliver this um, we're having associations talking to tom and uh, the association of open workshops who we can talk to about financing because um, we gave them our money from the donation pool and they are doing all of this donation bills and other things for us um, which i'm still um, thankful as hell <laughs> and um I think sooner or later we will join together to some kind of more larger umbrella and then think 
see where we can get because maker versus virus is not the best name for like maker for humanity, maker for future needs, maker for sustainability. And this is where we will go to. So right now, join the Slack, watch the website, uh, talk to me. Um, I'm capable of doing 10 to 20 direct messages a day <laughs> with different people. <laughs> and okay, we want to go to Dominic. Did Dominic <laughs> yes. have something to say? Um, well, I just want to, um, I'm coming back to your question, future. Um, I think um, all of you have maybe the same situation. It's going down. Face shields. Uh, I, would, I don't want to say the market is saturated, but it's a little bit like, I think the most people who need it they got it. And I got now a lot of requests from schools, for example, but this is, I think, just the second wave because a lot of teachers need something because they, with the face, um, with this normal mask, FFP2 mask, they have a little bit breathing problem, elder teachers, for example. So there's something going on. But when I think about future, there are two topics which really um, come into mind. First thing is hum human humanitarian help. Because I think most of us uh, send um, face shields to Moria and on Lesbos, where the refugee camp is. There are a lot of other um, requests. I would be happy if there's some kind of coordination, because I think it would make sense to, well, to, to combine our different face shields and send them to the people who need them. Because I think, okay, we have in Germany a lot of luck currently, we are on a stable situation, but there are other countries, they are not. So I'm happy if there is some kind of approach. And the other part is, which I want to emphasize is local network. Well, it's great that China can produce it, but um, this is the reason why this chaos was in the last eight weeks, because we, we had to, find a fast solution we were i think we have done all the great job to do it but it's um i think this local network maker versus virus all this hacker spaces hubs maybe the future maker spaces who come i hope i will also make one um they should stay there and be connected and be prepared I'll give you an example Braunschweig. there are some guys who are really genius in designing it's it's amazing it's really amazing these guys should be our development center because they can build uh, face shields and fast um, approaches. Yeah. It was great. Or universities is the other part. So some kind of network where we have all strengths and our well competence centers, but on an open way. Because I think the next approaches or the next crisis or wave two, wave three will come and maybe other things are necessary. Um, and this is something... I think it's really, and we're not talking about long term. In my opinion, these are things which we will talk about, hopefully not, but I think we will talk about in the next year or next two years again. That was my point before, you know, that we have now these local networks and they have production uh, capacity. So why not find local problems and then solve them in small scale? You know, that was my, my point with the ear savers. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, there's so many small problems that we we can um, we can solve this and produce it right away. And, and maybe in five years, I have my own injection molding machine behind that. It's so small. You don't know. You know, that's just, that's just my point. Yeah, so, that's that's the nice thing about open source. I mean, think ten years ago. What if we have think that some of us had like ten different printers standing around in a production line, and some crazy tech genius had like. 2,800 printers running at the same time, all of them sub 1,000 euros. I mean, think back to your first 3D printer you saw. I saw mine in 2009 at the Web Monday. Funnily, it was the Web Monday where I got my first Bitcoin. <laughs> and um, it, it was crap, but it was like, I was instantly mind blown. And over the time I met all of these amazing people like Adrian Boye and uh, Massimo Bansi and all of this together led to this moment where we get this amazing pop-up supply chains popping up all over the world. And only because of the internet, we were connected to people like there's this one guy in India from the maker Asylum who they were, they, they are nearing 500,000 pieces. And um, there are the guys from the Volker um, from the EU organizational initiative that went to every single or more or less every single um, Makerspace, Hackerspace, and all of the other companies. I mean, all of this based because people were sharing, 
all of this space because people were caring about each other, which still makes me quite happy to see uh, every single day. I'm thinking, oh, I'm so bleak with all of these people demonstrating this lockdown. Um, I'm looking at this thing, this whole network of people, and I'm like, okay, yeah, we're fine. We're going to be fine. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, I think we are, is time over? Is it fine? Yeah, I think that's a good time to wrap here. Um, Andreas, thank you for helping us organize this panel. Um, Niels, Dominic, uh, Peter, Tom, Anka, Karsten, thank you all for being part of this. Uh, we'd love to hear more from what you're doing. I'll, I'll keep certainly up with Andreas. You're welcome to any of you to share with me, Dale at make.co. I think it's really important we document what's going on and we both at a, at a practical or procedural level, but also at a conceptual level, the things that we're seeing the, the ways we're making things work. Um, I think it is a new way of doing things and uh, I, I hope we can harness this for the future. So thank you all, uh, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. Ho hope we can keep it up, thank you know, you. and not and not like that this effort will be like, go away and everybody goes back to the, uh, their own uh, uh, normal life, you know? Yeah, well, we never know. We never, never know. know. <laughs> we, we, can't we, we can't keep people from doing what they're gonna do, uh, but we can actually encourage them to belong. <laughs>